Good day to you fellow horror fans! I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror and I finally have another entry into the top 10 horror movies from each year series that I'm currently doing. The year in question this time is 1987, and this took me a lot of time to finish as there was a substantial amount of movies that I had to watch for the first time or even revisit. 1987 was flooded with fun fantastical horror films and it is a year I could have easily doubled the amount of entries for. And I'm sure there are some of these honorable mentions that are passing by in the video right now that you would definitively have included in your own top 10 list. As with all of my other stuff, this list is compiled together by me and me only, so personal preferences and my own nostalgia for some of these films will of course affect my ranking, there's no way around that. But do feel free to make your own list and post it in the comment section below. If you feel like there is one specific film that deserved more love, then shout it out as showing love to movies that did not make it is more fun to read than reading posts about films that you might feel did not deserve to make the list. Especially as there are still plenty of horror films from this year out there that I haven't been able to see yet, so a list like this is bound to change over time the more and more movies I see. Anyways, I had a lot of fun discovering and rediscovering horror films from this year, so let's get on with what you clicked on the video for. Here is my list of the top 10 horror movies of 1987. Starting off the list at number 10 is a film I wouldn't be surprised of if others would have wanted higher up on the list as we are starting out with John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. I know that some Carpenter fans rate this quite high on his filmography, but even after several viewings over the years I never became that big of a fan of the film. That being said, it did make this list for a reason. It is a fun film, Carpenter's direction is excellent, and there are plenty of atmosphere and cool casting choices to be enjoyed, including a great Alice Cooper cameo. There are some interesting ideas in this film, and it's easy for me to see why other fans have fallen in love with it, but since it hasn't happened to me yet, I can't put Prince of Darkness higher on this list than number 10. <laughs> At number 9 we have the only anthology film on this list with Creepshow 2. This sequel to the George Romero-Stephen King collaboration from 5 years earlier doesn't manage to recreate the exact magic from the original Creepshow, but it is still a fun anthology film that has two great short stories and one mediocre. I absolutely love the raft and the hitchhiker segments, and those two makes me overlook the fact that the first segment and the wraparound is a bit bland, and that the film lacks the comic book flair that the original had. I also wanted more stories, as only 3 feels a bit low on a Creepshow movie. There was originally supposed to be 2 more stories on this, with one of them, Cat from Hell, ending up in a 1990 unofficial third Creepshow film, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Just don't go into this expecting the same quality as Creepshow 1, and then you'll have a good time with Creepshow 2. Cause the scares come twice as quickly in... I beat you! Creepshow 2. At number 8 we have sadly the only Italian film on this list, with what many consider to be the last great Dario Argento effort with Opera. This is a film I enjoyed a lot more when I was younger and first got into Argento, and a film that hasn't grown that well with me over the years. I just don't find it that interesting anymore, but I will not deny that it has some excellent camera work and some of the best special effects in any of Argento's movies. Its 107 minute long running time is a bit too much for my taste, as I feel it could have been shortened a bit to have a bigger punch, but my nitpicking aside, this is definitively a film that every fan of 80s Italian horror films need to see, and probably already has seen. For many more reasons than what I had time to talk about in this video, this film is an essential watch to everyone interested in the long and impressive filmography of Dario Argento. And hell, even if you aren't a fan already, try something new and experience opera. The opera. The final note. And we are now at number 7 with The Stepfather. And when you got a great film like this at the lower half of the list, then you know you got some good stuff coming up. The best part of this film is the incredible Terry O'Quinn as the title character. He delivers a chilling, career defining performance that will make you overlook the fact that the film isn't really all that violent. 
it's more of a psychological film than a slasher, and if you're up for that, then you have an excellent film ahead of you to enjoy in The Stepfather. Oh, and if you want to hear me talk more about this film, then there might just happen to be a full video review of it to be found available on my channel. Help me! Help! You're a very bad girl. The Stepfather. At number 6 we have what I believe will be the biggest surprise for you on this list. Anguish is not as well known as the rest of the films I've included there, but this Spanish produced mixture of Lamberto Bava's Demons and William Lustig's Maniac surprised the hell out of me as this was one of the last films I saw before finishing this list and I knew very little about it. Anguish is surprisingly unique and has a clever movie within a movie concept going for it. Anguish is directed by Vigas Luna, a filmmaker who mostly did more artsy, erotic films I believe, and you can see his art house background in this film. Anguish is definitively the most underrated film I have on this list, so if you haven't seen it, then take my word for it and go check out Anguish. Una película de Vigas Luna, presentada por Lauren Films. We are at the Hall of Fame mark already, so I guess it's time to deliver a shocking decision here by having Hellraiser as far down as number 5. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a fantastic dark film that the entire horror community loves, and make no mistake, I do love my Cenobites as well, and if you were to put this on top of your own list, then I would not be mad at you or try to disagree with you at all. Hellraiser is different from pretty much any other horror film out there. And I remember being scared as hell when my teenager eyes first got to look of Pinhead and his group of strange creature friends. I can't imagine there being anyone out there that would check out a video like this one that hasn't already seen Hellraiser, but if you are a younger horror fan, or perhaps just someone who hasn't gotten around to it yet, then yeah, believe the hype, Hellraiser is a must see movie. We'll tear your soul apart. <laughs> So, what could possibly be above Hellraiser you might ask? Well, how about one of the best gateway horror films with the Canadian awesomeness that is The Gate? A reason why this might be so high up on my list is that this was a childhood favorite of mine and it is a perfect film for a 10-12 year old who are first now getting into the genre. It caters to an audience of that age and sets up its scares and frights accordingly. But it is still a film that you can put on and enjoy the hell out of at a grown up age. And if you just so happen to be a big fan of The Gate already, then check out the sequel from 1990. Or at least check out the review I have for it up on my channel. They have opened the gate. Pray it's not too late. And now we enter the top 3 spots, and at number 3 we welcome the young, badass vampires from The Lost Boys. What can I possibly say about this film that has been said before by more intelligent minds than mine? The Lost Boys is one of the best vampire films of all time, and it has one of the most memorable theme songs from any 80s movies, regardless of genre, with Gerard McMahon's Cry Little Sister. Lost Boys has plenty of teams going on, a fantastic cast, and a fun director that is Joel Schumacher behind the camera. Updated to fit the times, The Lost Boys is the perfect mix of the vampire genre and the glorious days of the 80s. And even if it has the 80s looks down to a T, I feel like The Lost Boys would be equally, or even bigger of a success, if it was released today. A timeless classic, for sure. And coming in at second place, just slightly behind number 1, is Evil Dead 2. This film sees the birth of the fan favorite anti hero, Ash, immortalized forever by Bruce Campbell. Yeah, he was in the first Evil Dead as well, but this character takes quite a few turns from the goofy, frightened soul in the original to the more cartoonish, funny idiot we get in this one. Evil Dead 2 turned up the humor, and while some say this is the best Evil Dead film, I personally prefer the pure horror of the first one. But Evil Dead 2 is a fan favorite for a reason, and if you want some gory fun entertainment, then it's hard to find a better choice than Evil Dead 2. Afraid it would never happen again. Now, from the theater of Evil Dead, comes Evil Dead 2. And 
Drum roll, please. At number one, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warriors. Yeah, I prefer this film over Evil Dead 2 and Hellraiser. I'm a Freddy fan, what do you want from me? Dream Warriors is to many Freddy fans their favorite nightmare movie out of the entire franchise. My personal favorite is still the original, but with this coming in right behind it. Dream Warriors saw the return of Heather Langenkamp as Nancy, and there was an increase in magic and fantasy added to this film that made it perhaps the most fun Freddy film out there. Oh, and it doesn't hurt to have the awesome ducking song on the soundtrack either. The film has everything you could want from a Freddy Krueger movie, and as such, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warriors deserves to be called the best horror film of 1987. So, that's it. That's my list of the top 10 horror films from 1987. I expect that many might disagree with the order that these are in, but are there any films that you feel are missing from the list? I would not be mad at anyone for wanting stage fright, street trash or near dark on this list, so like I said in the beginning of this video, I'd love to hear from you about what your top 10 list from this year would be. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it, then there are videos on my channel available with top 10 lists of each year from 1980 and all the way up until this one from 1987, and plenty of other stuff that you will also hopefully enjoy. I will be starting working on a list for 1988 shortly, so I'd appreciate it if you happen to have any suggestions of some hidden gems from that year. Leaving a like lets me know that I should prioritize a new best of list, and subscribing to my channel just makes me happy. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you again in the future, here on Cinema Terror.